people. And I'd like to turn to uh, our leader on the Energy Committee, the chairman of the Energy Committee, the senator from Alaska, certainly somebody that understands energy, another state that produces a huge amount of energy for this country and wants to produce more and can produce more, but only with the infrastructure to do it. And isn't that what we're talking about here today? This country can have more jobs, more economic growth, and more energy that we produce right here at home. But, Senator, don't we need the infrastructure to move that energy as safely and as cost-effectively as possible? To my friend and, and colleague from North Dakota, it is all about in infrastructure. In, in Alaska, in my home state, we have boundless supplies of oil, of natural gas. But until we were able to build that 800-mile pipeline across two mountain ranges to deliver that oil from Alaska's North Slope to Tidewater in, in Valdez, that oil didn't do anybody any good. Now that oil pipeline in Alaska is less than half full. And so we are working to try to figure out how we do more as a state to contribute to our nation's energy needs to allow us as a state to be producing more for the benefit not only of our state but of the nation as as well but yet we are held back by policies that limit us so it's policies and it's infrastructure it's absolutely infrastructure we're trying to move Alaska's natural gas to market as well but again if you don't have the infrastructure it sits, it stays, it doesn't benefit the consumers, it doesn't create the jobs, it doesn't help any of us out. So Keystone truly is about infrastructure. And I, I thank my, my colleague from North Dakota for leading on this issue for years now, for reintroducing the legislation, uh, Senate Bill 1, the first bill to be filed in the Senate this year, it, it, it will be, it will be, Mr. President, among the first bills to pass in this new Congress, and appropriately so, appropriately so. This is a measure that, again, not only enjoys bipartisan support here in the Senate, it enjoys broad support over in the House, but it enjoys support across our nation for great reason. So, you say, why? Why are we where we are? Why are we looking at this situation and saying there's so much frustration going on here? Senator McConnell has, has promised to allow open and full debate on the Keystone XL pipeline project, the legislation in front of it. I think we're looking forward to it. As the, as the chairman of the Energy Committee, I'm looking forward to robust debate on the Keystone XL and what it will provide for this country in terms of jobs, in terms of opportunities. But we're all frustrated. We're frustrated by a president's decision or unwillingness, really, unwillingness to make a decision about this pipeline. 2,301 days and counting since the company seeking to build it, submitted an application for this cross-border permit. 2,301 days, that's more than six years ago. And then yesterday, the president finally is able to make a decision, apparently. He issues his statement of administration policy, and in his statement, he says that by advancing this measure, it would cut short consideration of important issues. Excuse me, Mr. President, cut short a process that has been underway for over six years? That's, that's just amazing to me. So again, when we talk about, about decisions, let's, let's get moving with this. Let's get moving with this. The President seems to be advancing um, some pretty interesting things when it comes to the energy discussion. He was quoted in an interview just uh, this morning. This was an interview with the president in the Detroit News. And he basically told Americans, he says, you know, we're enjoying lower energy prices right now, but you better enjoy them fast because they're not going to last. He said, 
He said, uh, we've got to be smart about our energy policy. I'm with you there, Mr. President. We do have to be smart about our energy policy. But to think that the suggestion here is just enjoy low pr prices while they last, take advantage of the sunshine, no. Mr. President, your energy policies need to make sense for today. They need to make sense for the midterm and for the long term. And for the long term and for the short term, we need to make sure that we've got infrastructure that will allow us, allow us the energy supply that is so important to this country. It amazes me that we would be so defeatist with this approach. So we've got an opportunity here in this Congress. We had an opportunity this morning, this morning in the Energy Committee. We had scheduled a hearing on the Keystone XL pipeline. We were going to hear testimony on original legislation to approve Keystone XL, as we did last year, on a bipartisan basis. But as members in the body know, there was objection to that unanimous consent. We had to cancel or we had to postpone that hearing. I quite honestly was surprised by it. It would have been nice to know that an objection was coming before we had organized the hearing, before we had invited witnesses, before we had completed all the preparations. So we're going to do our best in the committee to adhere to regular order. I'm hopeful that our, our colleagues will, will work with us on that. But I would like to introduce for the record, Mr. President, if I can, um, some of the testimony that we received from the three witnesses who graciously agreed to participate in our hearing that we had scheduled for this morning. Andrew Black, who is the president and CEO of the Association of Oil Pipelines, he described pipeline safety issues, the gains that Keystone XL would bring to the American economy in terms of jobs and payrolls. Part of the excerpts from his testimony are as follows. He says, while there is much controversy associated with the Keystone XL pipeline, the facts are that the pipelines are the safest way to transport crude oil and other energy products. A barrel of crude oil has a better than 99.999% chance of reaching its destination safely by pipeline, safer than any competing transportation mode. A second witness that we had invited was David Molino, who's the legislative director of the Labor's International Union of North America. In his testimony, he explored the positive jobs impact of the pipeline, responded to some environmental concerns. An excerpt from Mr. Molino is, regardless of characterizations by the project's opponent, it is indisputable that jobs will be created and supported in the extraction and refining of the oil, as well in the manufacturing and service sectors. And then we also invited Greg Dotson, who's the Vice President for Energy Policy at the Center for American Progress. He submitted his testimony in opposition. We made sure that we had uh, opposition testimony presented as well. He discussed climate change. He responded to the arguments in favor of Keystone. And while he may be an opponent of the pipeline, um, and as usual, would have been outnumbered by the supporters of the project, I will still submit his written testimony for the record here today. And Mr. President, I would ask uh, consent that the testimonies of Mr. Black, Mr. Uh, Molino, and Mr. Dotson be included as part of the record. Without objection. But I do believe, Mr. Mr. President, that had we been allowed to, to hold the hearing this morning, we would have heard very strong bipartisan statements in support of Keystone XL from many members of our committee. The majority of our committee supports this pipeline and is already co-sponsoring this bill. So, Mr. President, I want to, to close my comments by assuring members of this committee we are, in, we are in day two of this 115th Congress. This is not going to be our only debate on energy legislation over the years. I know that it's been a long seven years since we have had comprehensive energy legislation. A lot has changed. A lot of people have great ideas to improve and reform our policies, and I welcome those ideas. I'm looking forward to the debate to advancing um, these proposals through the Energy Committee, I think we can make a significant, significant progress on supply, on infrastructure, on efficiency, on accountability. And, and, and that 
those areas in particular should be the, the form or the focus of, of an energy bill that we would hope to report out. We're going to work hard in this committee. We're planning on legislating. Um, Keystone XL is a natural point for this Congress because it has been delayed for so long. 2,301 days. It, it, it's clear that this president is not going to make a decision on this, so the Congress needs to make it instead. So I look forward to coming back to the floor in a couple days when we have Senate Bill 1 officially in front of us. We're going to have good debate on it. I look forward to, uh, to working with my colleague who has been so, so aggressive on this issue for so long. His leadership has been key in getting us here. But we need to finish it up. We need to make the connects so that we can move the resource and provide the jobs for this country and for our allies and friends in Canada. And with that, I, I again thank my friend and uh, look forward to these next couple days and really the next couple weeks where we will have an opportunity to, to put this before the American people here on the floor of the United States Senate.